It's a big moment for us. We finally have a big battery bank. We've got five of these 100 amp hour lithium battery banks from Starlight Solar. These are Elite Power Solutions packs. Um, and I've got my buddy Corbin here to help me understand what's going on on all the instructions. So tonight we're gonna install that and get the solar all hooked up, probably bleeding into tomorrow a little bit. Batteries are going in here. I'm gonna remove these cabinets just so we don't have to keep opening them. Love that feature. Batteries and charge controller are going in here. We're glad Corbin is here because this is way over my head. I would not be able to handle this. Here's the plan. We've got our five 100 amp hour packs in here. This is how big they are compared to my hand. We had to beef up the support under there. I don't know if you can see that. Because the closet wasn't designed to hold 140 pounds. When you're going down the road with the earthquake that these always have when you pull them, we want to make sure that it's strong enough to handle that. So the next step is to put the sense boards on here. Great, they use helicoils. You gotta be kidding me. What's that? Oh my goodness, you think they stripped one? And they helicoiled it? Or do you think they tapped these all with helicoils? You gotta be kidding me, there's a helicoil there. It look like there's one in all of them. Seriously? Except for those two inside ones don't have one. Well, well it did, till I unscrewed it. I think it's so that they don't strip out so they don't strip the threads out. That's so they have a steel insert. How am I gonna get this back in? I don't have a helicoil tool. What happened? Just smush the coil up. I did. Yep. Garbage. Not good at all. So check this out. They use helicoils in here. These two have them in, and those two came out when we pulled them out. That really sucks. I don't know what I did wrong. I just used my drill to pull it out and the helicoil came out instead of the screw. <sighs> May have to get a helicoil kit and install two new ones in there. Wow, that's disappointing on $5,000 worth of batteries. That one's good. That one's good. So, so far, the only helicoils that have come out were when there wasn't one of those on it. These are not going back in. Just like that. Green light oh, comes on. Green light. And we did it right. Note to the viewers, pay someone else to do this. <laughs> it's cool, we only have 76 more to go. Get it in? Yeah. Good job. It's not like this is our first time putting screws in. Yes, we're breaking the rules. You're not supposed to have all these off at once, so please don't do what we're doing. Well, Corbin, I can get as many of these done as I can tonight. I don't need to waste your time doing this. Corbin and I figured out what the problem is with these helicoils. When you screw them in over here, they've got this big plate to prevent them from going all the way to the bottom and hitting the tang of the helicoil. Over here, that's not the case, and they screw down and they hit the end of the helicoil and then pull it like a spring and then it clamps onto the end of this. So before we even got it, the helicoil was fused to this screw, so when you pull it out, the helicoil has no choice but to come out with it. Which is super frustrating. This is awful. This should not be happening on a battery system that costs this much. That's ridiculous. It's sad. I was really looking forward to this part, actually. So most of the night tonight has been a lot of figuring. Nothing real exciting to show to the camera, but we've been figuring how we're going to set up our little board, how we're going to have our EMS computer working, what we need to buy, how we're going to mount the charge controller. Just a lot of figuring and planning it out in our head. So now we've got a good plan. We're going to start putting it together. Yay, one cell, all done. Dang it, 
Another helicoil came out. So that's one out of five of these did not strip. That's ridiculous. They're screwing these in too far. If they would just leave them and not screw them in all the way, this wouldn't happen. None of these would strip. Super frustrating. Anyway, we've got most of these sense boards all connected, except for where there's a stripped thread. It's been a long night. That took more time than I thought. And tomorrow, Corb and I will hit it again. And we're gonna build a box around these, mount the charge controller in there, and run all our wiring, and then we'll be like 80, 90% done. There's still some other parts we need to buy, like a copper bus bar for all these, and some more wiring and stuff. So that's gonna come tomorrow. I do not recommend doing this part yourself. I think it'd be worth paying someone to have this done for you. And I'm a do-it-yourself guy. I'm so glad I have Corbin. We're taking our time to make sure it's exactly how I want it, which feels really good. Well, it's the next day. Corbin's back, and we've got a mess and a big job ahead of us. We're going to see how much of this we can knock out today. We're going to have to button it up another day because we don't have all the parts we need, unfortunately. When you do installs like this, no one sells just a do-it-yourself kit that comes with everything you need. So you kind of have to do a lot of research and piece it all together. Once again, I would probably recommend ha paying someone to do the battery install for you so you don't abuse friendships and uh, burn bridges. <laughs> Corbin's great. He's been super helpful. And he won't hate us for this verbally. But when he goes home to his wife, he might hate us for this. So that's why you should do a professional installation. And because you might not save a whole lot of money after you replace all the parts you broke like I'm doing. Finding helicoils on a Saturday morning is not an easy task. We found them at Napa, but it's $50 to fix these five mm -hmm. things. Not super excited about that. Fixing things that shouldn't have been broken in the first place. Now we have to modify our $50 tool because it's not, it's too long to go in that hole. This is turning into be much bigger of a hassle than I would have liked. All right, off to go modify that. What do you guys think? Do you think drilling into the battery and tapping your own threads might void the warranty? I'm gonna go with a giant yes. The good news is all it has to hold is a sense board and it's one of the three bolts that holds this on. So it's not like there's hundreds of pounds of force on there that needs to be held on with this, but we do need a good secure electrical connection. Poor Starlight Solar, I can see them right now saying, no people, this is not how you install our batteries. We know that, so please don't think this is Starlight endorsing how these are installed. It's not. This is us trying to get these running without having to ship them back to Arizona and then wait for more. But I will say Starlight's communication has been excellent. He's even been emailing me outside of work hours. Yes, we know a T handle is the way to do it, but I loaned my tap set out to someone and it never came back with my T handle. So don't know where that is. Elite has a great reputation for their cells. I would just tell them in the future, don't put the screws in on that one end piece that doesn't have any metal spacers in it. Glad we got Corbin here. I'm not very good at this sort of thing at this finesse level. Pressure's on, Corbin. The whole world is watching you. Don't screw up. Because we know I haven't <laughs> screwed up yet. Did not factor cutting new threads and putting helicoils into a battery install, did you? I didn't factor a lot of this stuff into a battery <laughs> install. Oh, beautiful. So it's down in there a couple threads, but I think it'll be fine. That's great. So you already knew this, but Corbin is the man. He's got all those taps in. He has salvaged four of the five batteries. Yes, it cost us two hours and 50 bucks. But that's a lot better than having to ship them back to Starlight and getting new ones. At least I think it's better. It's not like we're going to be taking these on and off again anyway, and we fixed the problem that should have been fixed from the get-go. So these are no worse than they should have been from the factory. Plenty more, I imagine. 
we have to get this mess of wires. There's the remote panel for the battery monitor system. monitors that we want to tape up a little. And this is the network cable for the charge controller to talk to the inverter. And this is the four gauge wire coming from our junction box on the ceiling, our combiner box from the solar. We're gonna run that all under, get it on the right side of the trailer. There aren't a ton of options on these 30 foot models. Some people put them under the couch, but then you've gotta run all your thick cables along the edge. Not a huge fan of that. I really like how clean this install is going. It's not the easy way to do it though, which is why most installers don't do it this way. I don't think you're sure it. ever imagined we'd be putting no. this much cable through there. All right, now let's just feed this the rest of the way until we run out. So close. I should say this is way easier on a giant class A where you have more room, more weight capacity, you're not putting it in closets. It's really tough in an Airstream that doesn't have a basement, that doesn't have storage compartments, that doesn't have the weight capacity to handle big stuff. We're glad we're doing it, but Airstreams, I've got to say, are probably one of the hardest installs to do. There are two craftsmen that I watch on YouTube. One is Jimmy DeResta. He's amazing. Clean shop, really organized. And the other is... Adam Savage from Mythbusters, he's got a show called Tested. And I relate to Adam more because he moves really fast, he doesn't use the guards on his tools, and his shop's kind of a mess when he's done. That's me. I'm more in that creative space and getting things done instead of, I mean, I like a clean environment, but when I'm in the zone, I'm hyper-focused. A lot of it's my ADHD but I'm hyper-focused and I don't have time to clean stuff up that'll mess with my current creative flow that's going right now. Anyway, check those two out. They're super fun to watch. All right, this is notched out to fit around our shelf in there. Let's give her a test fit. So that's gonna go there. Put all our circuitry on that and then box this all in so these don't go anywhere. While Corbin's laying out the circuit board, I'm going to be installing the mount for the charge controller in here. This thing is not going anywhere, I'll tell you that. If it does, the whole wall's coming with it. <laughs> Right. Well, we are gonna call that a wrap for the day. Next week, Corbin's coming back and we're gonna finish it all up. We gotta order a few parts. Really excited that this is coming together so well and that it fits so nicely. This is a nice compact package for an incredible amount of battery power. That is a ton of battery. Probably way more than we need. That's the same amount Technomati is using right now, to put it in perspective. And they run entirely off of electricity. They don't even have propane. 